Okay. So what I want to do, you have this worksheet. And what we're talking about today is um, using the function. It's going to have a variable, an x in the denominator. Still trying to figure out what's the vertical asymptote, what's the horizontal asymptote, right? And um, then graphing those. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna compare three different graphs. And the graphs that I have there are x minus one, that's the f of x, so let me type that in, x minus one. Linear, right? Easy. Then I have g of x. g of x is x minus one, so pay attention to how I enter this. x minus one is in parentheses because it's grouped together divided by two. You have to put the parentheses to show they're grouped together. H of X is X minus one over X minus two. Parentheses, group it together. Okay, so that's red, blue, green, okay? Now, I can kind of, hold on. Eh, that's the best I can do. And I hope that's okay with you. Right. Minus one, red, blue, green. Okay. You also have this paper in front of you, so. Okay, graph each function. I did. Determine which of the functions are linear. Great. Linear. Linear. Um, find the y-intercept of each function and the slope. Awesome. Y equals 1x minus 1. My slope is 1. My y-intercept is negative 1. So my first linear red graph. My blue graph. Well, it's x minus one with a two in the denominator. So it's like the whole first equation cut in half. So I can write it like this, but please know in your brain, you can also write it like this. If I split it up into two separate fractions, that's what it would look like. My slope is one half. My y-intercept is negative one half. Okay, now, how is, oh, green is, it just has a, maybe it has a Y, it, yeah, it has a Y intercept of one half approximately, approximately. Okay. Uh, what is the effect of F? Okay, I had my nice red line. Great. Then in G of X, I divided by two and it became blue line. So tell me when I divided by two, how did the red line change and become the blue line? What visually happened? And then also, like, if I were to have ordered pairs, what happened? And let me do this real quick for you, because I think... There you go. One, two, three. Okay. Any ideas? What visually happened from red to blue? Because I cut it in half. X minus one, cut in half. Any thoughts, any ideas? Um, I can't really see like the color. Like it's kind of faded. Sorry. Um, but like, oh, I still like the straight line is the red one. And the blue line 
is um, below it. It's not as steep. Um, the, uh, the blue line, uh, it goes up every one half, one half, and the red line goes up one. So the slope changed. Um, I had a flatter line. And that's because I cut every value of y in half. Every y value is halved. I cut the whole function was divided by two. That's good enough. So it's a little bit of a flatter line. Y values were halved. Let's go to part C. What is the value of h of x when x equals two? Okay, h of x. If x equal two, I'd get two minus one over two minus two. I'd get one over zero. This is not okay. That means that if x equals two, there is no line that exists for green. Take a look, green. If x equals two, that's right here. Uh, that's my vertical asymptote. My green line approaches it, approaches it, never touches it. Down here, approaches, 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 it's never gonna touch. At zero, if x equals zero, h of x is undefined, or I could say it's just non-existent. There is no value there. There is no uh, point, ordered pairs. I'm gonna to jump to D. What is the effect of F of X when dividing X minus one by X minus two? Okay. What happened when I divided X minus one divided by X minus two? Um, well, originally F of X is linear. Then when I divide by X minus two for H of X, when I divide by X minus two, then all of a sudden I have a curved, and I'm gonna say it's nonlinear, okay? Okay, let's go to E. How are they similar? How are they different? Look at my equations, x minus one, x minus one divided by two, x minus one divided by x minus two. What's the same? I need new people. I don't wanna hear from the same people. Troy in class right here. What's the same? Um, they all contain x minus one. They all have X minus one. Yep, they do. Great. How are they different? How are they different? Um, they're all divided by something different. They're all divided by something different. Number one is divided by just, I guess, nothing or one. one. Number two is divided by two. Number three is divided by a variable, a binomial, x minus two. Okay, is there anything else? The slope. Okay, is that Rena? Yeah. Okay, you've helped a lot. So I have to, I have, to have you like, no more helping. Someone else, guys.
How are they different? Give me another idea. And you cannot say the slope because Rena just said that. There's more, there's more. They have different, different y-intercepts. They have different y-intercepts. And then what did you say, the gentleman? Oh, no, that's me, Aaliyah. I said the same oh. thing. Oh, OK, so different y-intercepts? Yeah. Different y-intercepts? But you guys, one of the most obvious things of all is that um, the h of x is curved. So that's, but we've said that so many times before, nonlinear, right? Lastly, what do you notice about the graphs that have a variable in the denominator? That's the last one. What do you notice about the green? I'll just tell you, it's called a rational function. If there's a variable in the denominator, it's not a straight line. If there's a variable in the denominator, it's not a straight line. That's like the big takeaway. And we're gonna work with all functions today where there's a variable in the denominator. And it's always gonna be an X, by the way. We're not gonna put a Y in the denominator. For the flatter line, does that apply to like all of the boxes or? Number F? Oh, for like number B, the flatter line, does that like apply to all of them? No, that's only when you divide by two. I'm comparing F of X to G of X. Only when I divide by two, F of X to G of X. Okay, so I'm gonna do, sorry. I'm going, moving on. Um, here's just the mathematical definition. Today I'm going to have a polynomial divided by a polynomial. Uh, sometimes it's just going to be a solo x in the denominator. Sometimes it'll be a binomial in the denominator. Tomorrow, tomorrow's lesson, I might have a trinomial in the denominator. It's all clean. Good. Okay. So now, graphing rational functions. Determine the vertical asymptote. Okay. By the way, the vertical asymptote is always going to be my x equals something. It's going to relate to my k up or down. Well, the um, The key, we'll, we'll talk about that more, but it will be related to the K. My horizontal asymptote is going to be a Y equals something. Um, if I have a vertical asymptote that's like, you know, right here. As an example, step three, choose some X values on either side. Okay. If this is my vertical asymptote and it's at negative two, then I need to know that my graph is going to, I'm going to have one portion of my graph be over here. So maybe I should pick negative three or negative four, for example. I also need to pick some X values to plug in to form my graph on the right side. So like I could even pick X equals zero x equals one. So you need to pick some values on either side of the vertical asymptote so that you get an idea of what this side looks like and what this side looks like. Okay, I'm gonna go down. We're now getting into our first example. I, just a heads up, 
This example looks great, but I am on example two, which is one of your homework problems. I do need to change what example two says, just so you know. So don't work ahead because you'll be wasting your time. So now, rewrite the rational function g of x equals 4x divided by x minus 3 using long division. Long division. That's this, guys. The x minus 3 is on the exterior. The 4x is inside. How is the quotient related to the reciprocal function? Well, let's find out. We've never had a long division problem this short before. Please remember that the x in front, that's the number that I divide by. So first I divide and then I do a little multiplying. How many times does x go into 4x? And my kids in my class have already volunteered, so it's all you, Zoom. New Zoom people. How many times does x go into 4x? Four. Four. Now I multiply. x times 4. Negative 3 times 4. Remember how it's a subtraction problem on all division? Don't forget this negative subtraction, 4x minus 4x, nothing. This is kind of like a zero, right? Zero minus negative 12. Zero minus negative 12 is just positive 12. Here's how I write the answer. So it's how many whole times does it go in? It goes in four whole times. Then what's my remainder? Positive 12. I could have a negative 12. It's possible that there could be a negative remainder. You have one of those in your homework tonight with a negative remainder, but I'll explain that tomorrow. Over, what did I divide by? Oh, x minus 3. And guess what? This is very similar to what we saw yesterday. It's just written backwards. Where this is my H and this is my K. Okay, I just commutative property. You can write them in an opposite order. So now let's use this H and this K to help us. What does the H mean? Uh, does, oh, does it relate to one over X? That means, is there a variable in the bottom? Yes, yes, yes. It's a rational function. What's my H mean? What is it? I'm not acting weird on purpose. Well, I am acting weird on purpose. <laughs> Tell me what negative three does. Three to the right. Three right. And what's my K? What's my four do? It goes four up. Good, both of you. Guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to go to my graph because it's not at zero, zero. My three to the right is going to be my vertical asymptote, VA. VA, X equals three. Horizontal asymptote is the four up. Y equals four. So here we go. At three right, one, two, three, four up, one, two, three, four. This is where my asymptotes um, intersect. So I can go ahead and draw. This is x equals three. Vertical asymptote, x equals three. 
Here's my horizontal asymptote. Y equals four. My graph, my function is going to be in between these. Remember what it said on just the last page. Pick some values on the left side of your vertical asymptote. Well, my vertical asymptote is at three. So I could pick some small numbers like, um, I could pick zero, zero is easy. What if x equals zero? And I'm plugging it into my function. Either way, they mean the same thing. Four plus, I'm plugging in zero. I want to find an ordered pair. I want to start graphing. 12 divided by 0 minus 3. I'm not making a table of values because if I just have two points, two order pairs, then I can just do it real quick like this. 4 plus 12 over negative 3. 4 plus negative 4. Oh. Zero, zero. Plot it, zero, zero. Let's pick something else on the other side of my vertical asymptote, the left side of my vertical asymptote. Uh, one or two? I picked two, four plus 12 over two minus three, four plus 12 over negative one. Ooh, negative eight, two comma negative eight. Wow, my, sorry, it goes off my paper, bummer. Anyways, wait down here, I don't know, something like that. Check this out. Curvy, 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 down, 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 down. Where is it? Arrows at the end of each always. That's like for sure, for sure, you have to have it. Now I have to pick, let's just do two points. On the right side of my vertical asymptote to see where my Shape is here. Um, well, one, two, three, I don't know, four, five, six, or seven, something like that. I don't know. If x equals five, you really you can pick whatever you want. If you want to pick 27, go for it. I just pick small. Four plus 12 over five minus three. Four plus 12 over two. Four plus six, 10, five comma 10. One, two, three, four, five of 10. How about like, let's pick seven. Four, plus 12 over seven minus three. Four plus 12 over four, four plus three. Ooh, seven, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So my curve kind of is like, I don't know. Okay. Why would I not pick? Can I do this? What if I wanted to pick three? Is that yeah? What? I no, can't Rita. See. Can't see? Yeah. Um, 
Hold on. How about this? Can you see that? Um, could you move it a little bit to the right? Yeah, that's better. Yay! Why can't I pick x equals 3? Isn't it because it's on the asymptote? Right, and there's no line on the asymptote because the, my curves get really, really close, but they never touch. Okay, we're doing really good. What questions do you have? All right, I'm moving on then. Remember how I told you example two, I'm changing? I am. Look at what I wrote. I already edited it in my document. Not on your document. You guys have already uploaded yours. 6x over x minus 1. Please change it. Example 2. 6x over x minus 1. Please change it. Okay. First job. Do long division. Second job. Write my results, my answer. Then find my vertical asymptote and my horizontal asymptote. Then pick points on the left side of my vertical asymptote, pick points on the right side of my vertical asymptote. Okay. This is actually one of your homework problems. Your other homework problem is on the worksheet 4.2 additional practice. And it's number one on that page. You're only doing two problems for homework, you guys. This example number two in notes right now. And then on Google Classroom, it's 4.2 additional practice, only doing number one. I will help you find the vertical and the horizontal asymptote, and then I'm going to stop. Okay. How many times does x go into 6x? Six times. Then I multiply. x times 6. Negative 1 times 6. Six x take away six x. Zero minus negative, careful. Zero minus negative, six. It's possible to have negative remainders. If I have negative remainders, my graph looks a little different. This divides in six whole times Remainder six over, what did I divide by? Oh, X minus one. Check it out. This is my H, this is my K. One. Right. That's my vertical asymptote. My vertical asymptote is x equals one. Bum, 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 bum. Six up. And you can graph from there. You pick values on the left side 
of my vertical asymptote, like zero or negative one or negative two. You also pick values that are on the right side of my vertical asymptote, like, I don't know, three or four or five or whatever, whatever. Okay, so once again, you're doing this problem for homework and you're doing on 4.2 additional practice, just the first problem on that page. 